Let's go ahead and take a look. We're in a trade right now on a momentum setup. Let's take a look how we do it. First of all, the first thing we want to do is we're going to find out the market can only do two things. We're either trending or we're chopping. If you're trending, we have two setups we look for. Let's look since midnight last night. Look at the trading session. We only have two setups in the room, and we have a retracement setup, which it caught these swings. A retracement setup, what we're betting on is we're counting on the counter trend traders getting caught and us getting opposite in, opposite side of the counter trend traders, meaning we let them counter trend trade the market and we look for a retracement trade for continuation of trend. So this is a retracement trade. The easiest way to find a retracement trade, when an opposite color candle comes in against the trend filter, these candles that form are not standard candles. These candles have a lot of different ingredients that I put in them for supply and demand. What does that mean? If a red candle prints, there's more supply than demand. If a green candle prints, there's more demand than supply. So I have three moving averages on there. Moving averages, we all know that I think they're worthless by nature for support and resistance and crossover systems, but I really like them for trend direction. I got a small, intermediate, and larger larger moving average. If the small is below the intermediate, intermediate below the larger, you know that you're in a hard trend. You can see that we've been in a hard trend all morning. More importantly, if you are below all three MAs, the open versus the close of the candle, meaning the body of the candle, not the wicks, you are trending really hard down. So what we want to do then is we want to try to position ourselves in trend markets with only two setups. One is a retracement trade. A retracement trade what that is, once a green candle forms in the market or closes, we know that my filters are suggesting that the counter trend traders are entering the market and we want to get ready for a short. So when that first green candle form, we want to start watching my filters on market profile and also my sim dots over here to see where we can jump in with market delta for continuation. So here also, it caught the rolling position traders here green candle form it popped the market up a little bit we got a pull in with market delta down here I'll show you how we place our stops and entries and we're moving to the downside so that's a retracement trade it's when you get an opposite color candle remember these candles have a lot of filters built in already this is not a standard Rinko bar we actually have our own uh, we built our own server our own um, our own locking mechanism to lock this uh, to for our own for our members only in the room because this Rinka bar is very, very special and unique because it's not a standard Rinka bar. It has a lot of different supply-demand features built into each candle. So when it reaches, I mean, when it turns a green candle like we're doing now, we're in a retracement trade again as we speak. Then we're looking for a retracement short coming up as we speak right now. We'll watch Market Delta down here to pull us in in a second. Now. The other trade we look at is called a momentum trade, and this is a trade we just had fired off. If you're in a trade right now, you just want to let the runner run. This is what's called a momentum trade. A momentum trade is when you do not get an opposite color candle against a trend filter, and you just have all red bars or all green bars. I call that a MOMO trade. What a MOMO trade consists of, it consists of retracing to the small MA. Small MA, sometimes it reaches the intermediate, but not very often. It once you enter your bar, you enter bar uh, a candle, if it ticks back up and touches this small MA, then what you're looking for is this far right chart. It's called my three sim rank of fire and arrow. That is what we're looking for. We're looking for a retracement trade right here. We're looking for it to touch the small MA and then for my Fibonacci arrow to fire if it's touching that small MA, if I have all red candles. Now the trick to this is a neat little way you can tell if you're going to get a moment, momentum trade is I like seeing the distance, the open versus close of the candle. I like seeing distance away from this smaller MA. If I see big distance, you can see this is the largest distance from when the trend started right here to here. That's the largest distance that we had. You're probably going to get a momentum trade coming up. You can see the distance between the small MA to the high, to the open of the candle. See the distance right there. That's the largest distance of the move down. You probably are going to get in the next couple of candles, you're going to get a retracement trade or a momentum trade. So what you want to do, once you butt up against a small MA 
and these candles don't turn green like it is now right now. Now we're in a retracement trade. If it is intra bar and it's all red candle, then what I want to do is I want to look for the candle to close red. Once you close red, I mean a candle that uh, not close red, but um, a Fibonacci arrow to uh, give you a red arrow. Once that red arrow comes in, you know that you have now a momentum trade short. Momentum trade short, that is where you want to enter. Now, if you take the arrow, there's a couple ways you can do this. If you take the arrow by itself without marketability, you can place your stop right at two ticks above that swing high. Or we can do what I like to do, and I'm going to show you where you can place your stop, is you can use market delta down here. Now, market delta, what you can do is you can use this stop loss. I put it one tick above the swing. I mean, the, after the pull-in bar. So right here, I lowered my stop considerably by doing this technique. Here's a partial candle close inside. There's your partial candle close inside. Since that's your partial candle close inside, that's your entry at the open of the next bar. Your stop loss can be one tick above. Some traders like doing two ticks. That's your entry right there. All right, your entry is at the partial candle close right at that level. All right, so if you were to take this entry up here, that was your entry, stop loss here. Entry, there's your stop, one tick above that swing. If you took it earlier on that Fibonacci arrow, then your entry's here, stop loss, one tick above that swing. Right there, okay? All right, so that's how we can do it. That's how we can look to pop in the market with small stops. Look for a partial candle close. So when I'm doing this, I skinny this down so you can see a little better. Look how everything matched up, all right? Everything matched up really good. Now, we're still in a retracement trade. Look how we never got pulled in yet. We're on the symmetry dots over here right now in a retracement trade. Let's take a look at that real quick. But this is a momentum trade we got that, that, that's in right there, momentum trade, because it intra bar. The open first close came up, touched my small MA, and I tested, I mean, I got a Fibonacci error that fired. Now, look at the retracement trade. What? How can you decide where the market should stop on a retracement trade? A retracement trade, what they like to do is they like to bring it up to my SIM dots. As long as I don't close a whole candle above my SIM dots, I'm still in a retracement trade. So now we're setting up for another retracement trade here. So as the market's ticking, I'm looking for a possible retracement trade at this level because it's a green candle. Counter strength traders are coming in. So good way, a momentum trade, the easy way to look at it is if it's all red bars, look for the intra bar to tick back up. Look for that far right um, Fibonacci candles. To I mean Fibonacci arrows to form. You can get in right with the arrows. Stop two ticks above the arrows. What if you're in a retracement trade, though, and you got all green candles coming in? That's showing that you are getting into a retracement trade. The FIB, it doesn't have to uh, 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 hit the um, symmetry dots every time. If, if you're in a deeper retracement, you're going to go through symmetry. In other words, if you get to 64, 84 up here, you're going to be through symmetry. So then you want to look at market profile or anything else to pop you in the trade. But normally what will happen is once you're in a retracement trade, you should come within a couple ticks of symmetry right here. It's got to come within a minimum of two ticks within symmetry. Now you're at a deeper retracement. Then look for your candle down here. Look how we're not closing below our candle here. I mean our, our small um, MA. We're not closing below our small MA yet, so it's not pulling you in. So now we're looking for another wave down. You can see we have not got pulled in to this market. So once it does pull yourself in, if you pull yourself in on this market and it closes a partial candle close, then you know you're in a possible retracement trade short. Now, a good way to do it is, if you noticed on this last trade, look how we pulled ourselves in. Red, 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 red. The previous one pulled itself in. Red, 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 all the way down to your first target to let the runner run. A great way to use this down here also is you can use it so you don't get caught catching a counter wave up. In other words, if I close a partial candle close below 
and then all of a sudden I close right back above that small MA, you can take a small stop because your stop's going to be so small based upon using this if it closed right back above it because it should stay below it on good trends, on trending markets. Now, if you trade the arrow with a momentum trade, just leave your stop two ticks above the swing high and you're good to go. Let her stay right there, right above two ticks above the swing. It's the best way to do it. All right? So that's the difference between a momentum trade and a retracement trade. A retracement trade is when you get an opposite color candle that comes in against a trend filter. Then you look at the sim dots to give you an area where it should roll over. That, or you could use market profile too with it. Now market profile, all we know in trend works really great. Because what I like to do in market profile, I use my volume profile, my big red, blue, and thick green line. That's actually all the volume coming in the market for resistance and support. So if I break, if I'm trending down, I'd, I know I let LVA break, I let it retest. I let it retest and look for an ABC short. So this arrow that fired this morning right here on our last trade setup, right there in the retracement, that was also an LVA retest. So now I can use market profile for a stacked area confluence. So see how market profile works is I can use it for resistance. So not only did I have a momentum trade right here that retested my small MA on my trend chart, trend down, I had a break retest of my low value area to the exact tick. And I got an arrow that fired right at my Fibonacci arrow on my 3SIM where I look for that. So my momentum setup had all the ingredients for a perfect short. And that had everything going in the direction we want to go on. Break retest low value area, retest my momentum trade on the small MA, Fibonacci arrow. Now take a look at the retracement trade we got going on right now that's live moving right now. Look how, see my, my market delta, look how it's staying above my small MA. Check out my small MA. It's staying above it, right? It's staying above it. It hasn't pulled us in yet. Go to, go to gold. We just had a great gold trade that just happened right now. Go to gold. Gerald, look at gold trade on my two retracement trades. Make sure you scale here, guys. We just had it fire it off on gold. A beautiful trade. Now take a look at gold. Now my trend filter is what? We want to catch the rolling position traders. It just caught the rolling position traders. Look at my retracement trade on gold. Just happened right there. Look at these trades this morning on gold, just absolutely perfect. Hit my SIM dots. This is where I'm talking about the SIM dots coming in play on a retracement trade. So now, look at my retracement trade, and it just fired a momentum, a momentum trade here too. It's now on fire. Gold is just doing back-to-back -back winners here. So if I look right there, this is called a retracement trade on gold. Let me get market proof out of the way. So let's look since midnight on gold. It caught the rolling position traders there against trend. Remember, my small... MA is above my intermediate, intermediate above my larger MA. I am trending hard up. So I want to look for buy retracements. I only got two setups just like crude this morning on that last sell on crude. It was a great sell on crude. So I'm in a retracement trade. So this is a retracement trade on gold. So let's look at our last trade. Red bar comes in. Red bar comes in. My filters tell me that's the wrongly positioned traders or counter trend traders coming in. Since I know the counter trend traders are coming in, where are my SIM dots? So I'm looking for a retracement trade. My SIM dots called the low on these last two trades. Let's look at this last trade specifically. It comes within two ticks of symmetry. It actually broke through it. It broke through it some. It did not close below it. Since it did not close below it, you have a potential nice little symmetry trade to the upside. Now remember, it can still close above or below symmetry, right? You just want to make sure you pull yourself in with market delta, all right, because it's showing you that it's pulling yourself in the market with market delta. But if it lands right on symmetry like our crude oil short, the previous crude oil short did, if it lands right on symmetry or, or below symmetry for shorts and above symmetry for buys, as long as it doesn't close below it, you have perfect symmetry in the market. So when that happened in this last gold trade, red reversal bar, red reversal bar, red reversal bar. So as red bar is reversing, look where your sim dots are. It tells you the area to buy. Then we pop into our what? Look for our market delta. Where's our market delta? Our market delta is right here. Our market delta, our SIM dots are right here at the low. SIM dots are right there at the low. Where do I close a partial candle close? Right there it is. There's my entry bar. Entry bar is right there. Where can I place my stop? I can place my stop one tick below the entry bar so I can have a small stop. 
open it up at the next bar. My fill right there is at 95, and it got as high as 98 and a half. I just had a $350 trade with an eight tick stop. So a three to one reward to risk ratio on that last buy on gold based upon using that technique on popping in the market. So you can see on retracement trades, what I want to do on retracement trades is I want to use, I want to use what? I want to use my SIM dots as guidance to where a possible buy or sell is in my market delta. On momentum trades, let's look at the momentum trade that happened in gold. The momentum trade that happened on gold was right here at 830. So at 830, what do we have? At 830, we had gold come down and test the small MA at the same time. So we had our Fibonacci arrow. So you had a momentum and a retracement trade on gold. Gerald, go back to crude. Now how we can do, the the reason I have a, a small MA on the market delta is very simple. Go back to go, uh, crude oil, Gerald. And we'll shut this off. Go back to crude. Gerald, go back to crude. Or did you shut it off? Okay. Crude oil, let's take a look at it. So we saw that the momentum trades, right? Oh, sorry. Let me get this over here. We saw the momentum trades brought us down. That's a nice little sell there, momentum trade. But the retracement trade is here again, is moving up, moving up, moving up. Look how Market Delta helps you out though. Now watch, this is just Market Delta. Concentrate on Market Delta here for a second to, help, to show you how effective this technique is. So let me, let me show you. Here's our momentum short, right? So here's our Momo trade. There's our Momo trade right here. There's a Momo trade. Here's your entry bar. Stop loss, two ticks above the swing. I mean, one tick above the swing when you get in with the Momo trade. Look how the retracement trade came in here again. Here, I have three retracement trades back to back this morning since midnight. One, two, Another one just happened here a second ago. So what we want to do then is we want to look at looking at the market delta to pull us in. Look how market delta never closed below, never closed below, never closed below, never closed below. This is how market delta is effective on this. There's your close below. Right there is your close below. Now where can I place my stop? One tick above the swing. Now you load your stop. The reason I'm saying you can do this on retracement trades is this is that momentum trades, you can just put your stop loss above the arrow if you want, or if you're going to do confirmation like this, put it above the confirmation bar. But the confirmation bar to pull in, it's a good way to put one tick above that confirmation bar because what it's showing you is showing you that that is where the market should roll over, right at that exact point in time. Okay? So we have two trades, retracement trade, momentum trade, use the market delta to fire us in the trade. 